No one comes out and, and tells you that you got to do stuff. I mean, you can actually do this with your kid. Mm -hmm. You can take your kid and homeschool in, in Oregon, and you can have the kid do no work mm -hmm. for three years. Mm -hmm. I know instances where they've done that. Well, they don't do anything, and so the kid can't read. Well, then they got to do a test and stuff, but nobody enforces anything at homeschool in Oregon, and they don't in Washington either. Homeschool, you can do pretty much anything you want, and there's no enforcement. People think, oh, you're going to have okay. little things, and you're going to yeah. enforce it, and your kid has to do. Psh. No, you can have your let your kid sit home all day. Well, so online charter, at least you got to be doing stuff. Okay. I mean, so it's a step of it's a step above the poor homeschooling, but it's a step below the good homeschooling. You got good homeschooling, you got a parent really working with a kid and working and working with this and uh, I mean it, Well it, it, maybe it there's work. a possibility that the parent can get paid for a change. Think about it. They, <laughs> yeah. they can apply for a yeah. charter. I mean charter. What, yeah. what's the deal? Yeah. You can apply for yeah. a charter and get paid. Well I don't know. Three I'm or not four kids, you know, the money follows the kids and you know, hey, they're kids, right? I guess there's some kids that it might be good for. But, yeah, uh, having these huge numbers of kids sitting home alone doing their schoolwork on a computer, a huge portion of them which aren't going to graduate from high school, and you want to increase it? I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, but what about the numbers? Mom might say, well, they, the charter oh school of one. You know, give me 7,000 bucks. <laughs> to do the charter give me a charter school of one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. They I mean, gotta be approved. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm a late person, yeah, I'm just right. asking these yeah, questions. Right. I'm reading this stuff and I don't know what's going well, on if you here. look at it from a from, <laughs> just look at it from a common sense perspective. You want the kid, you think it's good for a kid to sit home. Right. No and, problem. Hey. And, and the parent isn't even there, and they, all day long they're sitting there on the But now mom can stay stuff. home and get paid. Uh, yeah, if they're a charter school of one. <laughs> well, yes. well, yeah. well, hey, okay. Yeah. Uh, income, right? The economy, yeah. you know. Yeah. What? A lot of folks are out of work. Yeah. The Republican uh, but, platform. Well, I, well, hey, charter hey, schools are one. But, but hey, the D's passed this thing. They, they, pay, yeah, they passed this thing. Yes, I know. Okay. I was kind of surprised <laughs> in a couple spots. <laughs> okay, here's another point. We're going to talk about that too, by the way. Allowing school districts to opt out of education service districts. We got a big one here. Educational service district. Opt out. Opt out right? I think to a certain. There's always been this difference, you know. There's, to a certain difference. degree, the education service district has duplicated stuff. Do you, do you, what, what's your opinion? Well, you think my opinion is that they should have figured out what they were duplicating. Consolidate, yeah. And yeah, and consolidated and made it work. So they, Maybe had seven big ones or something. Okay. But. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. It was one of those things in life you don't have a really big, strong opinion on. I don't, which is unusual for me in an educational thing to have some big, strong opinion. But Did you use the I, services I, when you were a teacher? Uh, I, yeah, I, you but didn't? mostly what I used, well, they had services for special ed kids. Right, okay. But mostly what I used personally was I used their, their movies, see? Okay. So they would have a movie you might want to, uh, in fact, the last year I showed a movie on the Holocaust. We didn't have it in our school. They didn't have it at the library, but I could get it at the ESD. They had it. Why couldn't you ask? The, why couldn't you have asked the library to get you one, get a copy? Well, that's, that's, that's a freebie, wouldn't it? No, those are expensive. I mean, from the library? If you were checking something out, if you needed something? Well, they didn't have it. That was my point. I could get it from the ESD. Okay. And, cost, and uh, uh, my school district opted out of the ESD for upper grades in Washington. So the middle school and the high school, if I remember this correctly, I think I do, middle school and the high school was not in the ESD, but the grade schools were. Okay. So I actually went over the ESD and I'd have to give them 20 bucks to show the movie. <laughs> so I and I didn't have a I didn't have a budget in my room, so I just ate my own twenty dollars. And I wanted to show that movie. It was a good movie. I finished my class of this movie on the Holocaust, hmm. the class that I was doing on uh, on uh, uh, diversity, and mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure we hit the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's, you got kids that don't even know the Holocaust existed mm -hmm. out there. I mean, it's amazing. Well, they're looking at TV all the time. People they, don't know. They don't know. They, people don't know well, how they, little kids know. Yeah, they often, don't know. I okay. That's a, well, that's another area that we're going to probably talk to as far as the educational service issue, okay? Okay, now, requiring requiring free full-day kindergarten by 2015. So what is that? That's a 24th of your budget now, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Your budget's got to go up a 24th or so if you mm -hmm. have 12 grades, and mm -hmm. now you have another half. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, well... I think it's good. I think it's very good to do 
the question is, can they afford it? I mean, it's it sounds a little bit to me like the uh, balloon payment on your mortgage. You know, I can af I can't afford it now, but I think by 2015 we'll be able to well they'll make more money and we can afford it. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But it's a great idea. It's great. I mean, you should have all day. What do we have in place now? Well, a lot of half day, and what if about, you want what, full day, you pay for the other half. We, we do have that now. We have that Yeah, model, half day, right? and you can pay for the other half in a lot of this way they in gonna, some different districts. But this way, they won't have to worry about it. It's, just going. it's all going to be covered. All will be covered. Okay. So you can send your kid for a full day kindergarten, and it's, a, and it's good. It's fine. I mean, it's a good thing that you could do that. Maybe mm -hmm. you don't have to, to send mm -hmm. your kid to kindergarten. I don't know. Okay, okay that's another we're going to look at. Okay. Giving K K twelve schools another twenty five million dollars. Do we need it then? Well, sure. Kick okay. them into money. I'm always for giving more money to the schools. But what about the failure rate? Well, the failure rates <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> I'm for giving more money to the schools, but the schools are doing a rotten job in a lot of oh, areas, so and it's a giving... different area than most people think. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> no, but it's fine. Give them some more money. You bet. Any strings attached to that money? Not that I remember. I mean, do you think that that should be? That should, no. It should be? No. They got to get over this idea of strings attached. Okay. That's where the governor's screwing up on this whole plan. He's got the investment board. The idea that you send the money if they only do these things, that doesn't. And, and the federal government's doing that too. Remember the race to the top money? Mm -hmm. You could have the race to the top money if you did these things. One of the things they criticized in that was the race to the top, yeah, the so failure of Oregon right. in the race to the top. They were concerned about And I was saying, system. hallelujah, mm -hmm. that race to the top was rotten. I mean, it was really a race to the bottom that people will talk about that. I, I didn't make that up. That was pretty good. But, uh, you know, they talk about it. You know, the, the, the kind of anti-reform teachers and the anti-reform movement talks about it as being a race to the bottom. They had all these strings on it and everything. It was, it was garbage. -y. They should have just taken that money, divided that up, and sent that out if they wanted to spend that money with no strings attached. Now, it's my understanding. You tell me whether I'm wrong or not. Is it, from, it was a school from back east or something that would graduate? In, just in this thing or in general? No, 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 this, no okay. I'm not in general. I'm you telling know, you where you're wrong. I'm a very late person okay. as it is, you know. Okay. But anyway, uh, they were talking this race to the top. Some of the people who were recipients were schools that were graduating kids and going to college. See, kids that were going to college. This one school up in New York was... Uh, you mean having really high graduation rates? Right, high graduation Still rates and yeah, stuff, they, as compared they, to what we're doing here. They, uh, we needed know. the money. I mean, we needed to be there, too. Don't you think? Oh, yeah, we could use... We could, uh, all sorts the of top, places so they could have used the money. But, but that race to the top money had a lot of restrictions on it. Mm -hmm. A lot of things you needed to do. How you And all that stuff, almost all that stuff, is not good for education. Okay, okay. You know, the whole... The idea of... Let's, you have to uh, approach, let's say, and have teachers, have the kids' test scores, basically, kids' achievement, they call it, uh, which, isn't, which is basically the same as test scores, have to be improved. Uh, I mean, you have to uh, take your teachers and you have to evaluate them based on the test scores to some degree. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. it's garbage. Mm -hmm. Well, again, like I said, what do you think that $25 million will probably go to? Any, any, well, I think any they're particular just going to spread it out, I think. I don't but, think there's any. I think they're just adding Anything in, specific? Just you think no now. specifics? Well, like maybe hopefully it'll failure go out, rate or something? Out, uh, hopefully it'll go to, to not laying off teachers. Not laying off teachers? Because there's a lot of places where they're really laying off teachers. Way more and that than would, they should be having to do. Okay. Okay, okay. Not just laying off teachers, but cutting programs, you know, the PE program, the music program. School in Portland, Peninsula, they were cutting part of the PE, part of the music, part of the counseling, and part of the library. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gee, man, Well, you know, again, one of the points that I guess one of the things that Kitzhopper talked to, Governor Kitzhopper talked to, is the whole centralization of a lot of this stuff. You know, you got all these school, all these superintendents, you got all these uh, school boards all over the all of the state and everybody's going in different directions. I don't want these kids coming here. Uh, I do this. They get more money over here at this moment. Now maybe they'll be able to address some of those issues. Wouldn't you think? That's what they think. It's not going to happen. They might address the money, but what are you going to now? The the state constitution says you have to give out equal money. What they're going to try and do is put strings on the money. 
And putting strings on the money is the wrong way to go because what they ought to be doing is freeing, really freeing those school districts up to get out from under all those regulations and, and to quit having to pass all the, jump through all these hoops that they have. It doesn't help the kids because there's too many hoops. And so the teachers spend their time going through the hoops when they should be spending their time helping the kids. There's the school districts spend their time going through the hoops when they should be spending their time figuring out how to fix their schools, not jumping through the hoops. I mean, uh, and, and you're just going to see more hoops. They're going to just put more hoops on. Hmm. You know, jump through this, jump through that hoop, jump through that hoop. It's, 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 not a good, it's not a good idea if it comes that way. And if they don't do it that way, if nothing changes, then it has no effect, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to be really tempted to say, what can I do to fix these problems in Oregon? And when they, every time that's come up in the last 20 years, really, they've gone down the wrong roads. What they ought to do to fix those problems is, and you've heard me talk about this on your show before, is to free up the schools to work on the problems within each school. Hmm. You, you know, not to free up, the, not to bring in all these other outside movements which don't necessarily fit the, the school. It's like your, how, your roof's leaking, but they bring in the, you gotta have the plumber come in and look at all your plumbing, mm -hmm. even though you don't need to have your plumbing looked at. But you still gotta do it. That's the way education works now. We, you, you, you gotta bring in this program and this program and this program and this program, even though they don't necessarily fit your school. Mm -hmm. Your school really needs this. Well, you gotta figure out what your school needs. No one does that work anymore. And just bring in these programs, so you're going to get more of that with the governor's stuff, not no. less. Well, Chip, tell and, me this. and the other thing is, you're going to get it. You're going to get it based on what the people he appoints to that committee think. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the committee that he has now, he's got a board that he appointed mm -hmm. that's pretty much looks like it might be the kind of the investment board. True, there's nobody on there that knows anything about poor kids mm -hmm. on the whole board. Mm -hmm. No one? Any ideas? No or? one. Who are some of the folks around No there? one. Any well, idea? they got Stanford Children woman. Stanford Children. Yeah, you know, they got Ron Saxton, I think, is on there. Ron Saxton, he's a guy that practically, to a huge degree, destroyed Portland Public Schools. Well, he was on the board at one point. He was uh, so destructive, it was unbelievable in Portland. Why do you think you had all those rotten schools for so long that they are trying tried to fix an high school redesign, which they didn't really fix? But, I mean... Yeah, Ron Saxony, but he's now he's one of the guys, and you think he knows anything about what's going on at uh, George Middle School? <laughs> Not even close. Well, a number of these uh, these bills that were passed. Now I take it they will they go into effect as soon as the governor signs off. Maybe for the next. I don't know the date. Of the, okay, we don't have any, those. those yeah, generally, dates. it's ninety days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it was two thousand fifteen. The aspect of it. Well, after the uh, the whole issue with the, the the new superintendent piece, and he being the boss of both appointing the board, well, that won't happen until 2014, or, or unless, as we said before, unless the present superintendent resigns. The thing that I want to know about him being the boss is two things. One, what does he know? I, I've never seen him say anything that I thought was really intelligent about schools, hmm. ever. Hmm. And, you know, uh, what's he said? And, 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 and what background and experience does he have w with schools? Yeah, you know, he's a doctor, right? Hmm. You, uh, what background experience does well, he like have? I said, the elected and now he's the, the same the, well, yeah, but we at least had a chance to look at that okay. when we elected her, you know. And, and the and and the other thing about Kitzhopper right. is, is, who does he who does he have around him that knows about like the east side of. Multnomah County and the problems they have. Good points, good points, good points. Then, uh, good know, points, you know, okay. You know. Well, look here, what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back and we're going to maybe focus a little bit on the on the local area as, as, as it relates to this issue, okay? We'll take a short break and Steve will be here with us. Be right back. We're clear. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.